Hello, it's time for another podcast of Never Too Late. I am your host, Debbie Wright. Today we have a special treat in store for you. We are going to talk with an 11 year old. I know it's been a long time since I was 11 and um, probably for most of you too. So I'm just curious to see what's going on in the life of 11 year olds these days. Today we have with us Brecken. Hi. He promises he's gonna say more than just hi and yes and no answers. Let's get started. Brecken, you live in a small town. Yes. Yes. Can you tell us, what is it like to live in a small town? Like, how many kids are in your class? How many Um, in your school? Probably around 250 people. That include the elementary and the high school? Yeah, I think for students. I don't know for staff and... Yeah, just students. Yeah, students, and then I have 14 or 15 kids in my class. And that's, um, you're going to be in sixth grade? Yes. Okay, so 14 kids in your whole class. So saying that you all stay together, you're going to have 14 kids in your graduating class, right? If Hopefully. If everybody... Maybe. Well, if they all graduate, yeah. yeah. If they all get good grades and graduate. Yeah. So in a small town, what do you do for fun? Usually would ride bikes in like spring, summer, and fall, and then during the winter. We have a big snow hill that they build up because it gets really snowy where we live in the winter. We just go there and have fun. So you build like, do you build a snow fort in it or you just climb Um, on it and play king of the hill? Yeah, we just play on it. Usually would just like play king of the hill, make slides out of it and yeah. Mm, It must be a pretty big snow hill. Usually, it should be. <laughs> if it's a good winter, you get a good yeah. snow hill, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you said you mainly in the other in the other seasons you ride your bikes around town. Yeah, ride our bikes and then play games and just hang out mostly. Hang out. Do most of the people in the town know each other? Mm, for the most. part. So if you do something bad, somebody's probably going to go find your mom and dad and tell that you did something naughty. Eh, sort of. <laughs> like, sort of? The only people we really know are just my friends' parents and my friends and all those guys. But probably if you really did something bad, somebody would figure out where to find your parents. Yeah. That's what happens in small towns. Yeah. Everybody knows how to, how to find you. Are you involved in any sports? Yeah, I mostly play football and baseball, and then sometimes, if I feel like it that year, I would play basketball. And then I used to wrestle, and then I kind of got bored of that. Let's let's talk about baseball. What position do you play in baseball? Usually, well, this year I played catcher and third baseman, a little bit of shortstop. It's hard being a catcher because it's this year we I it was my first year of kid pitch and then you could also steal bases after the ball went over the plate. So it's turning into real baseball. It's not little kid baseball yeah, anymore. Yeah, it's not kid baseball. You need to. It's more advanced. So the the coaches don't pitch for you anymore. No, your actual teammates pitch. Yeah. Being a small town, probably a small baseball team, then you get a chance to play a lot of different positions, right? Mm, yeah. The, this year, our head coach, he went around asking us when, on one practice where we wanted to play. So you kind of had a choice? So, yeah, you, can, you kind of had a choice. And if you were kind of eh at the game, you would be more in the outfield. <laughs> yeah. There so was a lot of kids that played in the outfield. The more <laughs> like the older kids, there was some old kid older kids that played in the outfield cuz they they never don't really play baseball before. Mm, they just were starting yeah. out. Yeah. But you've been playing for a long time. Yes, I've been playing for 
most of my life. And your dad was a baseball player, so he taught you all that. And he was a catcher too, right? Yes. So he taught you all the, all the ways to be a good catcher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you have to be able to throw pretty good being the catcher, don't you? Yeah. I didn't play <laughs> a lot of catcher because there was a an older, older kid, uh, and okay. it was his last year, so. Oh, uh, okay. He played more. So, how was your team this year? Did you have a pretty good team? Yes, we placed fourth or third in the championship stuff. Hmm, that's pretty good. Yeah, but there was a team, well, there was a couple of teams that weren't really following the rules of stuff. Cause, oh. Well, during the actual season, not the... Uh, uh, the playoff games? Playoff games, or... Or whatever you call it. Um, during the actual season, there was this team that was had uh, was following the rules, but they weren't really good. So during so when playoffs came up, they had this like seventh grader, maybe eighth grader, hmm. to their team, and it wasn't good. We the all the whole reason why we were kicked out of the playoffs was because of them, because they. Because they beat you because they had a seventh yeah. grader yeah. or an eighth grader. So what we would have, so when we were, um, they were batting. We just had the catcher and just play catch while that. For, so he, we didn't risk him hitting a home run or getting getting an RBI because he was. Oh. Uh. He was a big, but he was fast too. So. So you didn't pitch any good pitches to him. You just. No. Threw it right to the yeah. That makes sense. Then um, there was another team just when we started. Who knows what they did, but they had a lot of older kids too. So who should be making sure that they follow the rules? Isn't there somebody that should yeah. say, "Hey, you're cheating"? Yeah, the league commissioner or whatever. He's in charge of everything and. For some reason, he's, and he he's with like the team that had a lot of older kids. Oh, so the head guy was had the team that had the people cheating, so he didn't really care. Yeah, oh. and he didn't do anything about older kids being there, and yeah. Wow, that's a little crazy. Yeah, we got we like a couple years before everybody was mad at him. Because, I don't know, like rules or something. and yeah. So why does he get to stay being the commissioner? Because nobody else wants to do it? or I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So there's a, I know the podcast is called Never Too Late, but for you there, it's never too early to figure out life isn't fair, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about football? How many, I, being from a small town, you don't have a full roster of, football players like yeah. big school do schools too so, so how many so for our high school we kind of mix up two different schools our town and the, another town that is doesn't have a lot of people who like to play football or something hmm. so we kind of mix it how many on on your football though team how many um, do you have probably enough people for probably like 20 ish people on our team most okay. of us are from my town and then a couple from the other town so you still don't have enough people to have full rosters on offense I, and defense so you play both right yeah well i think that's what we're supposed to do no matter what if we have enough or not so mm. so you get to play different positions what did you what positions did you play in football I play wide receiver, running back for offense, and then for defense I play linebacker, and hopefully this year a little bit of corner. If you're a wide receiver and a running back, you must run pretty fast? Yeah. Cool. I'm almost as fast as the fastest kid in our class. Do you practice running? Um, not. Really. No, mm -hmm. you just run? Yeah, I just run when I run. But before you start playing and stuff, they warm you up, right? Yeah. So you don't you get do injured. These, like, if it's really cold out, you do a lot 
more, like a lot more warm-ups and then if it's if the out like if it's good playing conditions you would just do regular warm-ups yeah because where you live it can get pretty cold on some of those football games huh yes it can <laughs> it's not good it's not that fun when it's that mm. cold out no and what about wearing you, you wear all the pads and everything like yeah when you wear all the pads it's gets harder to when you wear more stuff on you especially like if you're wearing the the pads like the shoulder pads and stuff it's hard to run because it's all that extra weight on you probably a little harder to move too yeah. yeah and you wrestled for a while but you decided you didn't really like that yeah i didn't really like it because I did that when I was like in first and second grade. I did it for two or three years, and then I was just not having it because, like, once I got, I was getting choked on. It wasn't like on purpose. I just couldn't breathe because oh, I was scary, in, huh? Yeah, it. Was, I couldn't breathe because I was in just a weird position. Mm -hmm. So that that'd be pretty scary. I wouldn't want to do that either. It, and then after that, I was like, eh, I'm not doing this. Mm. And then I knocked my tooth loose while wrestling, a tooth loose while wrestling, too, so. <laughs> uh, and when, let's just say when I was wrestling, I was getting beat up. Well, that's not fun. If you don't enjoy it, there's no, no. no point in doing it. Yeah. So, yeah, there's another one. It's never too early. To realize you don't have to do what you don't want to do. Yeah. And basketball, sometimes you play basketball? Yeah. And I th believe this year I'm going to play basketball. And I think I am a shooting guard or a small forward. I can't remember. One of those yeah. two. Cool. What do you want to do when you grow up? Do you know what you want to do when you grow up? Uh, For a job? No, I haven't really... I I've always wanted to work where my dad works because his job looks, to me, his job looks fun and stuff. And I like racing, especially dirt track racing, like sprint cars and modified and street stocks and all those. I, I've also wanted to be that. And then recently I've been more into space so I've kind of been wanting to be an astronaut, too, a little bit. That would be interesting. Yes. I think I think the racing, though, the, the dirt track racing, you probably can't make a living from that, though. That's no. just for a fun hobby, That's right? That's like a secondary job. Yeah. Like, say, if you're doing part, like, it's kind of like a part-time job. So if you have two jobs, it would be dirt track racing and then your actual regular job but like if you would be in a more advanced dirt track series thing you would, you could maybe do that for a living being an astronaut that would be interesting do you know that there's space camp in alabama in huntsville you can go to space camp no, I did not know that until now. <laughs> Just so you all know, he has a big smile on his face. He did not know that. Yeah, that's where space camp is. Okay. And they, yeah, <laughs> have to check into that, huh? Yeah. So you pay attention um, when they're shooting up at the rockets and stuff? Well, mostly. So, like, the other night I took out my telescope and looked at the moon for a little bit. And last year when we were at your property up by where I live we stayed I stayed up a little bit later and we were and we were able to see comet or yeah astronaut uh, comet neowise and a little bit of the Milky Way so that was that was cool because that was a dark place with that yeah. little bunch of extra lights around was, so you could yeah, really see it it was more in the country so it was way better to see it than just in a regular town yeah i remember you were excited when you saw the comment and you came yeah. in 
came running over and said, "It's here!" It's yeah, here. I, I started. I started having tears of joy a little bit. You did. You were pretty excited about yeah. that. It was pretty cool, wasn't it? Yeah, I and I was shaking so bad. It was. You were shaking. Yeah, I was. Because you were excited. Yeah. And the wow. I was also pulled up a little bit, but. <laughs> But well, mostly because I was excited. Wow, maybe we better get you to space camp. So anybody listening, anybody want to sponsor a kid to go to space camp? <laughs> Say please. Please. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. Yes. And uh, going back to the racing stuff, I also, ever since I saw a quarter midget, I've always wanted one. And... Tell them what a quarter midget is. So, Some people won't know what it is. A quarter midget, so if you see a sprint car, you take off the wing, the wings, and then that, and then sm- make it smaller and smaller. It's more like a kid-sized midget. It's a kid-sized so, sprint car without the wings. Yeah. Well, there's a sprint car, and then there's a midget. A mi- sprint car, it's bigger and more like faster and then a midget it's smaller and like more almost more blocky mm-hmm. so and so it's smaller it's a quarter of a midget what ages do the kids drive those you, i think you can do it for till like you probably like 15ish maybe around oh, there okay and then there's like these small, like sprint car looking things. They're not mini sprints, they're smaller than that. And mm. yeah, the, there's that. And then going, and then there's a sprint car, a driver, sprint car driver, and he's 15, 16, and he's, his car's fast. So. But you have a favorite sprint car driver, yes. don't you? Yes, I do. You want to give him a shout out? You don't want to? No. He doesn't want to say your name. Sorry, I know what your name, but I'm not going to say it either. He doesn't want to. <laughs> and did you did you remember? Oh, go ahead. It's probably none of you know who he is. Oh, well, somebody might, or they might look him up. There you go. Okay. His name is Trevor Kirkland, and his number is 37. And he's out of... Helena, Montana. Helena, Montana. Okay, there you go. Everybody can look him up. Back to sponsorship. Okay, anybody want to sponsor a kid in a quarter midget? I have a shirt with that too. Like on the so it's like on the back it has like a quarter midget and then a number and then it on the top it says want to sponsor me. So do you wear it to the races? No, I wear yeah. merch. And dice of my of drivers, like Trevor Kirkland's, and then there's an, and a couple more, um, and then there's also one that I got over Christmas, and it and his name is Tenner Holmes, and he is the number 18 T. So if you don't wear this T-shirt though that says you want to sponsor me, how you get people you're gonna expect I, people to sponsor you? It's getting too small for me, so I oh. can't, I can't really wear it anymore because it gets. It's oh, you need another sh- one. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is there anything else you want to talk about with racing then? You like to go watch the sprint cars every yes. chance you get, right? Yes. About thirty. 40 minutes away from our town is another is a bigger town and we every once in a while we go there when there's sprint cars there and we watch that and go to the pits and look at the sprint cars and all the other cars and yeah and did you remember or did you know that your great grandpa used to drive a mini sprint car yes oh knew that okay. yes because I can remember when we were cleaning his stuff out once he after he passed away we I saw his mini sprint near in the big garage and yeah 
And you have his helmet, don't you? Yes, I do. And I have some pictures. As far as being 11, what do you want adults to know about being a kid who's 11 these days? Because, like, when I was 11, things were a lot different than they are now. Yes. So what's it like to be 11 these it, days? What should we know? For some reason, it's harder for us to go outside because we have the gaming stuff. Oh, see. And, so well, you s- but, like, not in a lot in summer. But if it's, like, blasting, like, 100 degrees. Because when we're we're at it gets like it's dry there so but when it's like a hundred degrees more than that it's too hot for me to go outside because we don't get that heat a lot because we usually are just in 80s and 90s and then in the winter we're mostly below below zero yeah for a couple weeks so you started saying you want them to know that it's not easy for you to go outside? Is that well, what you said? like, it's not hard, but, like, it's for some reason we're just too busy on the gaming stuff, especially if it's just, I mean, if it's okay out, we would go ride bikes and play for a little bit, but it's just, kind of, we're just always on the gaming stuff and do you think that's good for you to always be on the gaming stuff or should you go outside more well mostly if it's like winter I'd be on there a lot but like summer I'd be at the pool more and like riding bikes and hanging out with friends than playing but like if it's night I'd be playing if it's like just early in the morning I would be playing and then during the actual day I'd be out doing something mostly. What else do you want adults to know about being 11 these days? It's... Is there anything that worries you? No. Nothing worries you? I mean, if there's like... Sometimes I'd just be riding my bike and then there'd be this suspicious person walking around and I'd be like, okay, and then I'd just go away somewhere else did you ever have any problems in your town with suspicious people no no you just didn't know who they were yeah i did and they just like look at me weird and i just feel like okay and just leave Mm. well that's good do you think there's a lot of pressure on more pressure on 11 year olds these days maybe Mm. in our town it's not really hard to go outside and hang out with friends. Other, But, like, if you have friends that live in the country, then it's harder to go hang out with them because they live in the country. And our parents don't want to just drive us there and just for us to play and hang out. So. Yeah, I know that. I used to be the kid that lived in the country. Yeah. <laughs> so we didn't get to hang out with our friends very much either. So I want to ask you, what about COVID? Did COVID make you nervous? When it, it kind of just made me anxious to get outside when we were in lockdown. Because we, last year we got done with school earlier because of COVID. And I was just anxious to just go back to school and have an actual regular school year. And this year we just had to wear masks and we just got locked down for about a week or two because there was just getting more cases there for high school and second grade. So there and then when we were in lockdown for the two weeks, I'd go over to my friend's house and do it there because our parents were thought it would be better for us to be doing it at the same place. To do your schoolwork together? Yeah. So we could just feel like we were more at school and Mm. so we could be more social and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we were in lockdown forever. I was just anxious to go outside because I couldn't go outside and my friend was planning on moving to another state, which was kind of hard on me 
and then so when he moved I was just I was you didn't get to say goodbye I did it was just you hard. didn't get to spend time with him hmm. yeah that's hard and then yeah and then after that it was after the first week he left it was I was getting back on track with my stuff and then yeah to make your grandma cry so mainly the COVID for you the only the only thing that really worried you about it was just because you weren't able to get out and see your friends and you didn't yeah. get to spend much time with your friend before he moved yeah but we we had a we had a good friendship and yeah it was hard for me when he moved yeah but when we're I'm doing something I would just forget about it for a little bit and then when I start talking about it I just yeah you remember how much fun you had together and what a good friend he was yeah yeah so do you think maybe adults need to try and take kids' feelings more into account with all this COVID well, stuff and locking everybody down? Well, if it's like lockdown because COVID and it's high cases, then I get it for you not be able to go outside. So you're saying that you understand when adults say that you can't go do stuff because of COVID? So adults are making all these decisions about COVID and they don't really take into account the things that the kids have to go to because kids like you are growing up, well, the past year or so of having to have worn masks and stuff like that. Do you think, do, you un, do kids understand why that is or do they think this is silly? Do you think it's normal now that you have to wear a mask? Um, I think it, they're just getting I think they're trying just now getting used to it and now that we're kind of it's summer you don't have to wear a mask anymore but I think hopefully I think this year we might need to wear a mask but for the most part I don't think we will is it hard to wear a mask at school um you have you have asthma right Does yeah I have asthma but like I only get it if, during like recess. Oh, when you run too much. Yeah, I just <laughs> get it when I run too much. But I have the the pills for it. So. Is it hard to wear a mask during school? No, but like near the end, my ears just like the back of my ears just start oh, hurting yeah. and aching, and then yeah. So I try to keep my mask off as much as possible. <laughs> Whenever you can. Yeah. So that's what that's why I mostly wear gaiters. Mm. Or more comfortable mm -hmm. masks. Is there anything else that you want to add? What anything else you want to talk about that we didn't talk about yet? Um, Do you get along with your mom and dad okay? You haven't yeah. turned into a teenager yet. No. <laughs> um my my sister, she acts like a teenager, though, most of the time. <laughs> and she's only... S seven. Seven, I can't remember. Um, she's only seven, and she, she's a... She acts like a teenager? She's yeah. A, she's a handful, is she? Yes. <laughs> something. And then, so, I just try and stay away from her as much as possible, <laughs> just because she's sometimes so I think that's pretty normal for brother and sister and yeah we siblings we annoy each other but I don't even, like sometimes I don't even do anything to her and she's like stop and I'm, like, <laughs> I'm not even doing anything so. anything else you want to talk about uh, what else do people need to know it's never too early to do what you want very good. Yes. Yeah.
You you can do anything you want when you want to do it. And make sure that your life is like how you want it to be. Very wise from an 11 year old. Yeah. Make your, yeah, just make your life, make your life count. Make your life just do what you want to do and when you want to do it. Very good. Thank you, Brecken, very much for chatting with me today. I hope that other people got a little insight to the minds of an 11-year-old. I thought you did a very good job, an awesome job, and you were very well-spoken, and I'm very proud of you. And I can say that because I'm your Grammy, and I love <laughs> you. <laughs> All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in, and we will get back to you again next week. Remember, it's never too late, and for Brecken, it's never too early. Do what you want.